I made a low power compact Plex server designed to be used anywhere you may need to catch up on your favorite shows, even if you don't have an internet connection or even power. And no, that's not clickbait. This setup will host all of your media locally across its own network and is completely powered by a portable battery bank. Basically, it's the perfect road trip companion for the kids, a way to stay entertained when you're trying to convince yourself you like camping, or just plug it into any network and use it as a normal Plex server. Now, the concept here isn't unique to these specific parts I chose, but in general, you'll need four things. A computer to host Plex, storage, a network, and a way to power everything. Let's start with the computer. I went with this little GTK Tech mini PC for a few reasons. It's small, low power, has Intel QuickSync for transcoding, and can be powered over USB-C. You'll see why that's important in a bit. The specs aren't going to blow you away here with an Intel N5105, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and a 128 gigabyte SSD, but trust me, it's enough. Now, obviously you're thinking that 128 gigs isn't enough for your entire media library, which is why the second part of the puzzle is storage. I went with one of these four terabyte Toshiba external 2.5 inch hard drives. There are a few benefits to this specific device. It's powered via USB and it's much more economical than its solid state cousins. If four terabytes isn't enough for you, then I, I don't know, get two of them. Realistically, there are plenty of options for storage. If you don't like this idea, then you can use a mini PC with space for multiple M.2 drives, or even just build a little ITX system with space for even more storage. But that's obviously going to up the price, power usage, and physical footprint. For just a mini PC and hard drive, I'm in about 230 bucks. Now this is enough to host a proper Plex server, but unless you're the only user and want to physically connect your laptop to it, we're gonna need a proper network setup. And when I say proper network, I don't mean that we need connection to the internet. I mean, we need a router that can connect this server then also to our other client devices that wanna use Plex. For this, I think it was a no brainer and went with this GLINet Barrel AX. These GLINet devices make amazing travel routers with features like built-in VPN configurations, AdGuard, multi-WAN load balancing, and you can even plug in your phone and use its tethering feature to provide an internet connection to all your devices with a full feature router. But we really aren't gonna use any of that. For my use case, it just made sense since these GLINet devices follow the common theme in being compact, low power, and being able to be powered via USB. This specific model is one of their higher end models with Wi-Fi 6, but even then it only costs us around $80. And honestly, GLINet has a full lineup of different travel routers, and all of them are honestly gonna get the job done for this use case. That leaves the final step, the power. The main thing I was looking for here was a device that had a battery and the ability to power my devices while also being charged at the same time. That landed me on this Anchor Prime 9600 milliamp hour battery pack. It's got two USB-C ports with enough output for my server and my router, and it charges via the built-in 120 volt plug. So realistically, if you're using this in the car, you'll need some sort of inverter, but plenty of people either have those in their car already or have one built in. If not, you can find a cheap one for like 20 bucks. The power unit itself was $90, which isn't cheap. And if you just want to power the unit directly from the inverter, that's fine too. But I wanted something that could run for a bit without power in the event you stop for gas or something and you don't want to disturb the demon spawns in the middle of Miss Rachel. All in this exact setup will run you about $400. Can it be done cheaper? Sure, you could use less storage, you could get a cheaper GLINet router and forego the battery bank and do this for like half the price. But you could also do it for way more money, so I think this is a solid compromise. Well, now that we have the hardware, let's talk about how to set it up and see how it performs. I'm gonna start with the networking and this is going to be a quick section because you really don't have to do much. Honestly, you could get by with just turning on the router and plugging it into your server via the LAN port. The only additional thing we're gonna do here is go into the GLINet web UI and set our server to have a static IP address just so that it doesn't change. Then we'll go ahead and adjust our Wi-Fi config like changing the SSID and the password. That's legit all you need to do for this setup. Now, depending on your platform and operating system, the way you install Plex will differ, but in my setup, I'm running Linux, specifically Ubuntu server, so that's what I'll use. There honestly isn't anything crazy about this setup, so do whatever works for you. 
The only thing here is that we need to remove all partitions from our external drive with FDisk, then create a new partition. We'll then create a file system on that partition with a single line. I went with ext4 here, but you can pick whichever file system floats your boat. The last step is to create a directory on the server to mount that file system to and add the line to your fstab file. I went with the mount slash satchel location, then when adding the fstab entry, I used the disk's UUID rather than the device partition just in case it ends up changing for some reason. This is pretty standard stuff in Linux, but if you're using Windows, it'll obviously be different. Too long didn't read, just make sure that you can access your external drive. So this is gonna be the directory where we store all of our legally obtained media, so go ahead and move it all over there. Okay, Plex time, or Jellyfin, different strokes for different folks, right? And since I'm on a Debian-based Linux distro, I downloaded the dev package and just ran that. Realistically, you're just gonna follow the Plex's install guide for whichever operating system you're using. After that, Plex should be up and running and you can access it via the web browser using the IP of your server and port 32400. You'll be doing this from another machine you have connected to your GLINet router since it'll then be on the same network as your Plex server. From here, it's up to you to configure your Plex server as you see fit. Your media will be stored on that external drive, so when you add a media library, just point to where you mounted that external drive file system and boom, we have a Plex server running on a tiny PC with four terabytes of storage and is accessible from any device within Wi-Fi range. To make sure your devices can access Plex without a proper internet connection, you'll need to go into the network settings and add your subnet to the list of IPs that can access the server without authentication. This is required since we won't have a network connection to authenticate against. And since it's powered by a device with a built-in battery, we can run this completely off grid. When streaming a show, this setup pulls between 15 to 20 watts, which should give us about two hours of runtime. Now, obviously, you could go with a bigger battery if you wanted it to run longer. As for the server itself, it runs great. I mentioned we have built-in transcoding, so it is capable of re-encoding media on the fly, but in the year 2025, it's pretty easy to get by without having to do any transcoding at all. Now, initially the hardware transcoding wasn't working for me. Then I realized I was on the older 20.04 version of Ubuntu. So I upgraded to 22.04, which has better support for these Jasper Lake chips and that fixed it. In terms of real world use, I think this setup is awesome. One thing of note is that if you connect a device to the GLINet router to watch a show, then that device won't have an internet connection since the router has no WAN. You could just plug in your phone and tether it like I mentioned before to alleviate this, so it's definitely not that big of an issue. You may have also noticed this super cool stand that I have that just fits everything in it so nicely and well, I made it. And I'm well aware that it's not that impressive, but I just got a 3D printer a few weeks ago and this is my first real design project, so I'm proud of it. Leave me alone. I'm using the Prusa MK4S that they sent me and obviously I can't give a review on it since this is the only 3D printer I've ever used and I think it's great. I mean, the Cloud Connect stuff makes it super easy to make my designs anywhere and just send them to the printer. My wife has an older 3D printer she used for making custom cookie cutters and from what I've seen, this Prusa is on an entirely different level. But yeah, as for my design, there are definitely things to improve on, but hey, I'm learning. I want to add a better mount for my battery bank, the hard drive needs some kind of swivel lock so it doesn't end up sliding out, and I'd like to have a spot to store the cables when they're not in use, but for now, it works pretty great. Final thoughts here? Honestly, this is a fantastic setup, and if you want a way for your family or friends to be able to stream media without using all your data, and you want a sleek, compact form factor, then do this. And I don't mean you have to do this specifically. You can do any form of this with various levels of server power, storage size, and power options. As long as it works for you, that's all that matters. And the only downside I have with this setup is that the battery bank doesn't really work the way I thought it would. I was hoping that if I had it plugged into a car inverter and the inverter turned off, it would continue to power the setup via battery. And I mean, it does, but only after a short like two second cutover period in which everything gets reset. There are probably ways around this, and if your inverter runs even when the car is off, then this really isn't an issue. But hey, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I know I've seen some of you out there doing something similar to this, so how does mine compare? 
If you like this video, then drop a like and subscribe if you want to see more. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my tiny compact server that fits so nicely in my pants. Y'all are the best. And if you're still watching, you're Jellyfin. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.